Welcome back. Today we will be discussing an important topic and often challenging topic. History taking in teenage patients with eating disorders. We will go through the structure approach using HEADS assessment, focusing on key areas to help you navigate cases of anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa effectively. Let's get started. We will discuss about the key component of eating disorders. We will discuss the HEAD assessment framework, the two important eating disorder types, anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. And we will discuss how to have sensitive and non-judgmental approach to interview teenagers. Let's discuss the importance of history taking in eating disorder patient. It is complex medical and psychological conditions. Early recognition and intervention improves the outcome. Adolescents may present with non-specific symptoms like fatigue, weight loss, mood changes. We need to understand well the underlying psychological and social triggers. How to approach? We need to have safe and private environment. We need to establish the confidentiality. Use open-ended question, avoid judgment. Your body language and active listening is very important. Use non-confrontational tone to build trust. What are the components of HEADS assessment? The first component is H. H stands for home. We need to ask few questions. How is the home condition? Next component is education or employment. You need to ask few questions about the, how is the academics going on, whether the child is employed or not. Then we need to discuss about the activities. How, what is the hobby and how the patient is spending their leisure time. Next component is use of drug or alcohol. But to deal with this question, you need to have a very non-confrontational tone and supportive way. Then you need to ask sexuality as well as the suicidal or depression ideation. Now we will discuss the first type of eating disorder that is anorexia nervosa. It is associated with intense fear of gaining weight despite of being underweight, severe restriction of food intake, body image distortion, excessive exercise or use of laxative. The other type of eating disorder is bulimia nervosa. It is characterized by episodes of binge eating followed by purging, by doing, vomiting or using laxative, feeling of lack of control over eating, preoccupation with body weight and shape. For taking history, you need to follow the basic history pattern that I already discussed in my history station. First of all, you need to ask the eating habits, the frequency, type of food, any, any eating rituals the patient is having. Then you need to take a very good history about the weight, change of weight, target weight, concern about any weight gain. You need to understand how is the body image, the perception, dissatisfaction, fear of weight gain the patient is having or not. Then you need to ask menstrual history because amenorrhea is frequently associated with eating disorder. In some cases, irregular cycles are also noted. Medical history, you need to inquire about uh, GI symptoms, bloating, constipation, any dizziness and fatigue could be associated. Now, I'm going to give you a mnemonic because by while taking the history, you will forget some points and sometimes it may affect you in your marking. So first, the mnemonic is BMW and the second mnemonic is CLEVER. B stands for body image, M for mental health, W for weight gain, C stands for clothing, L stands for laxative, E stands for eating, V for vanity, E for exercise, and R for role model. We need to remember the red flag signs of eating disorder. First, rapid and extreme weight loss. Avoiding meals or social gathering involving food. Doing exercise excessively. Fear of gaining weight despite low body weight. Physical signs like bradycardia, hypothermia, orthostatic hypotension, and Lanugo hair growth. Let's discuss the psychological feature of eating disorder. In anorexia, perfectionism, rigid thinking, and low self extremes are extremely noted. 
and its anxiety around eating in public. Whereas in bulimia, impulsivity, emotional liability, feelings of guilt and shame after e-binging are noted. Poor emotional regulations are also noted in some cases. Common tips. Maintain calm and non-judgmental tone. Allow time for silence and let patient to speak. Validate feelings without minimizing concern. Avoid direct confrontation of weight and appearance. Offer support and explore readiness. The change. management for eating disorder is multidisciplinary. The pediatrician, psychiatrist, psychologist and dietitians are involved with the care. And first of all, we need to stabilize the patient medically because this patient may present in acute settings with dyselectrolytemia and bradycardia. Family-based therapy for adolescents are recommended. Sometimes we take cognitive behavioral therapy for bulimia and binge eating and monitor physical and psychological health regularly. In summary, HIT's assessment framework provides structured approach to adolescent history taking. Anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa have distinct and overlapping features. Sensitive and pain communication is the key. Early recognition and intervention improves the outcome. Multidisciplinary support is essential for long term. If you want to have any discussion, you can comment below. And uh, thank you very much for your love and support. Please like, share and subscribe. And uh, see you in the next video. Thank you.